So today is the big day, Friday, the last Friday of June, and I've got the clutch back. It's cool enough to put it in today. The last three days was over 90 degrees and hot and humid. Now it's just right. Looks quite a bit different now. They didn't put a full pad of friction plate material on it like they did before. They put these little pads. They're obviously made out of a different kind of material. It looks like something like the new front brake pads on cars. Let's hope it works as well. That's where I got it from. Where I sent it away to get rebuilt from that place. There's the cost. And there's the total. Not too bad. So to get that heavy pressure plate up in the air and out of the way so I could get my clutch plate out, and that's the pressure plate. I just put a steel bar across, hooked my little chain hoist to it, tied it up and yanked it out of the way, pulled back the stubby output shaft, and slipped the clutch right out. Should make it really easy to put back in too. I'll use a little bit of sandpaper to clean up the tiny bit of rust that formed in the two weeks that this was sitting there. No big deal. And I brought some grease to lube the parts as I put them back together. So there's what it looks like. Exactly like a car clutch. The flywheel surface, and the pressure plate surface, and the transmission input shaft, which isn't part of the transmission. It's a stubby removable part. So you can take this machine all apart without splitting the case like you do in an old tractor. Much better idea. It's just that every part's kind of heavy. Now I gotta put a tiny bit of lube on those splines. Not too much, and a little bit of lube on the tip so it can get in the hole better. Reason being, it makes the clutch slide back in better, of course. And if you put too much lube on, it flies up and gets on the surface and then your clutch slips. Since this machine always sits outside, I'll use this waterproof type of lube. Mmm, lube. Now time to slip her on. Always remember which side went to the flywheel. There, that was really simple. Now to lower everything down. down to the right level now. Now just to slide it over. Done. She's in place and I use this pry bar to pop the back of the input shaft into the hole in the pilot bearing. So now I just got to slightly adjust the position of the flywheel to get the bolt started to go in to hold the pressure plate on. Now I got it exactly in place and one bolt in. Now just to put the rest of the bolts in move the flywheel, I just hit the starter button a little bit every time. It just goes It's easy to get access to them. Nothing too hard already. Pretty simple. Now that the pressure plate is all bolted on secure, next job is to get the clutch actuator arm set on those two pins and that shaft set to the top hole by standing outside the machine and getting a long bar and pounding that shaft all the way through. Like so, the shaft is going through now. Okay, the long bar is all the way through. I've got the engagement disengagement hand lever back on. So, the clutch functions now. That other disc is a braking disc. It just stops the uh, drivetrain from freewheeling when it's in disengaged position so it doesn't cause the gears to grind when you engage the gears when you want to engage and when the clutch isn't engaged. Now to slip the braking disc back on, presses up against that one, that's got friction on it, and then put the U-joints back on. U-joints half on now. Now just to put the other two caps on and we're all set. So it's all done now. Everything except for the safety cover plate. That thing. Now to see if it'll fire up and work normally and drive on its own.
from the depths of despair, she lives again to conquer another hill, crush another car, and make another YouTube video. Sweet. Get her done. Now we gotta fix Sky Hill.